Ladies and gentlemen, it's the York Sports Report Show with Jason York, your host. That's him, the pretty guy in a toy store. Hey, what are you doing in a toy store, pretty guy? I took my kid! Ladies and gentlemen, relax. I know you paid your money. The Brewers is heading back to Chicago. The Hawks are up 2-0 against the San Jose Sharks in the Western Conference Final. The Madhouse on Madison Street will be roaring. United Center, Friday night. Aaron Brunette, I love you. You're smart, you're sexy. I know you're very smart. Extremely smart. That's what I like about women. I like their smarts. Go Hawks. Anthony Emmy standing on his head. Look at this save. Anti. Jonathan Taze, well, he just reminds me of Steve Eisenman all over again. Hey, Sharks fan, look puzzled all you want, buddy. It's the York Sports Report Show. Today it is uh, day off for the Western Con... It is the first day off of the Western Conference Final as this series switches over to Chicago from San Jose. As you all know, the Chicago Blackhawks are up 2-0. Two, two, uh, last night's game in, in San Jose was just flat out a brilliant, brilliant game by the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, the one thing that I, I have to admit that I, I, I somewhat kind of underestimated is how fast the Chicago Blackhawks. I've, I've watched this team for the last uh, two years with this, this, this young nucleus sort of killer team here. Uh, I've been watching the Hawks since probably 1983-84. Uh, this is their best Hawks team ever, hands down. Uh, Ronick, Larmer, Chelios, Belfour, those were great teams, don't get me wrong. Those were great, great hockey teams. And that was sort of, when, when that team was together, that was sort of the last good years of, of old-time hockey. Uh, today's game is just way faster, and the Hawks are just proving it. Uh, to the San Jose Sharks that flat out the Sharks just don't have the gun power or, or the wheels, pardon me, to, to, to skate with them. Uh, if, if the San Jose Sharks and the San Jose Sharks did admit this, the Canucks admitted it as well, the Nashville Predators admitted it, um, if, if we think that we can get into a, a, a horse race with these team, with uh, the, this young team, we're in trouble. And, and now San Jose, before game one even started, San Jose, some of their players said, we don't want to get into a sort of a, a horse race with these guns because these, they've got some fast horses here. So the bottom line is, is that they're skating, uh, they're dominating, uh, they're do dominating on their back checking. Um, Marion Hosa does not have large, big, fat staffs in this series, but his skating and his forward checking, his back checking is just flat out, just flawless. Um, Joel Thornton last night um, slash David Bolin. Now David Bolin is playing lights out amazing uh, for checking hockey against Joel Thornton. Uh, he is wherever Joel Thornton goes, Dave Bolin's right there. Great, great line changes with uh, Coach Q last night. Um, but Dave Bolin is just playing out of his head. He is playing that old Essa Tikkanen sort of Tikkanen style. Um, I, I, again, wherever Joel Thornton is, Dave Bolin is. Uh, there's, there's just this immaculate poor checking going on by Bolin. But last night, Joel Thornton took a deliberate slash to Dave Bolin in the faceoff um, in the uh, Hawks zone. Uh, I, I'm, I'm baffled that there's no suspension. There isn't going to be a suspension. There's been no word of it. Uh, but but I just I think it was such a deliberate um, and, and what really pisses me off about this play was that the ref only called two minutes. Well, why not four minutes? I mean, a a anyways... Thornton's uh, excuse uh, after the game, and, and McClellan, the head coach of the San Jose Sharks, both said that this was an attempt, a shot at net. So he was trying to shoot the puck as the ref was dropping. The ref wasn't even near or close to dropping the puck. It was a deliberate two-handed shot uh, on Dave Boland's wrist, and I just think it was just absolute crap and that the refs missed it in terms of giving him four minutes. Uh, the league has decided to more or less just turn their cheek on it because it's Joel Thornton. Uh, just, just a BS call. Um, but anyways, uh, the third line checking line of, uh, of, of this team right now is just absolutely playing lights out hockey. Uh, Verstique and, and, and uh, um, uh, Verstique Sharp and, um, or pardon me, uh, Verstique Ladd and Bolin are just playing immaculate hockey. Ladd has a big first goal last night. Um, the, the thing is with that line is Verstique last night probably showed me the most... I, I, I've always known that Verstique's got a lot of talent, but he's got a lot of talent. I mean, he made some tremendous moves once he got over the blue line, and he backed it up with patience. He's got great hands. We all know Verstique's got great hands. Uh, but, but Verstique, Ladd, and, and, and Bolin, these, these guys are, are dominating on, on, on this... This, this so-called number one line of San Jose, Marlowe, Heatley. Heatley's got to get it. For San Jose to survive, Heatley, Thornton, and Marlowe have to get it. Marlowe did get a late goal last night. 
Um, but uh, this this third line checking team is just or on, on Chicago is just playing lights out hockey. Um, Antti Niemi now is is playing just incredible hockey. Um, the thing is is that he's solid. He keeps the Hawks in the game. He he can bounce back after pressure. He's handling the pressure exceptionally well. Uh, and and this kid's confidence just must be going through the roof right now. So Antti Niemi's got just phenomenal, phenomenal lateral movement side to side, post to post. Nothing gets down low. Nothing gets past him down low. His pads, they're, they're not like the average looking sort of pad where they're all kind of puppy and all that. And I know a lot of the pads, they have that sort of square angle to them, that square lined angle. Um, but his are all kind of flat. Nothing gets past down low on Antti Niemi. Uh, but he's playing lights out hockey. Um, in watching this game last night, I don't want to say that you know, I, I'm not giving them the cup yet, but the amount of speed and confidence um, and pressure that this team has just ultimately handled since more or less game two <clears throat> of the Vancouver Canucks series, and they've been able to sort of take another step to the next plateau. Um, I don't know if we've seen a team since the Red Wings, the Penguins, and even the Oilers in playoff hockey play this confident with the puck. Their puck control is just unbelievable. Last night was the best puck control game I've seen with the Hawks in, in I don't know how long. However, the best puck controlled game that I've seen the Hawks in the last two years had to be against the San Jose Sharks back in November. I think it was in November where they beat the Sharks 7-1. I mean, they were all over the map. But, and, and now they're starting to play like that again. Their, their confidence is just monstrous. Um, Duncan Keith, the way he leads the rush uh, with his speed, he's able to make plays is just looking unbelievable. I mean, again, I go back to that point where I said Duncan Keith reminds me a little bit of Paul Coffey. He reminds me a lot of Paul Coffey. He is flat out playing lights out hockey. Um, same with Jarmelson. Um, Nicholas Jarmelson is just playing flawless hockey. Just getting in the corners, getting the puck out, taking the hits, giving the hits. Um, Brian Campbell is, is, is skating very, very well. He, it looks like Brian Campbell is back to old Brian Campbell. Um, and Brian Seabrook obviously is banging bodies. I mean, that's that's what that's what's important for the Hawks is that this guy. And and, th and this is what shocks me is the Hawks are playing so well against the team where I actually kind of feared. I thought, man, San Jose likes to bang bodies. They've got finesse. They've got speed. They they just don't have the speed to to play with Chicago. I mean, San Jose is by far probably in the top five fastest teams in the league. Chicago's number one. Hey, Hawk fans, turn into the Jason York Sports Report show to the next episode. We'll talk more about the Chicago Blackhawks and the San Jose Sharks heading back to Chicago for Game 3 on Friday night.